So the first question is, do soulmates exist? I think they do. I feel that I've got my soulmate. I don't know of anybody else that I ever dated or anything that I've never stopped loving him for any any time, the whole time we've been together. So I think I found my soulmate. What makes someone beautiful? The way they look at the world and the way they look at you, if, you know, and if they appreciate you and just, it isn't always just the looks. It's the person themselves that makes them beautiful. The things, the way they think and the way they act toward you and they could be the poorest person in the world but still be beautiful. What do we need most in this world? Peace. Togetherness. Stop fighting. Get along. Talk things out. Which harsh truths do you prefer to ignore, though you know it's wrong? The one thing that sometimes it bothers me, but I don't feel that I have to go to church every Sunday to believe in God. Because I've always believed in God. And I I don't, I belong to a church, but I don't always attend. A lot of people want you to believe that if you don't go to church and worship God, then you're going to go to hell. I don't feel that way. I can worship God without going into a church to do it. Is one lifetime enough? No. <laughs> because as long as I have kids and grandkids alive, I'd like to stay alive to be with them and, and see their families and watch them grow. What does it mean to be a woman? To be the mother of, of children and grandmother of grandchildren and a wife to a, a man you love and have a home and take care of it and cook for your family and just I don't think I'd want to be a man because they are you know they have more responsibility because it isn't always the woman that has to get out and get a job if a man has a family he feels he has to support the family and they expect him to support them and they have it harder than a woman i think i mean women do a lot of work too because they take care of the house and but i have a husband that because i can't he will how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are some some days I feel like I'm 90, <laughs> but most of the, the time I feel my age. But there's times that I would like to be younger, like when we talk about roller skating. I love to roller skate, and I'd love to do it again, but I don't know how I get a pair of skates on over my brace. <laughs> what is one thing that you would most like to change about the world? The politics. I would change it so they wouldn't be putting each other down and make it a rule that they couldn't slander the other parties. You know, let people believe what they believe in the ones they want to believe and not do all the backstabbing. And I get so sick of all those advertisements. He did this, he said that. and. That I would love to see stopped. I mean, you can't even watch television without all the advertisements being slandering each other. I just don't like that. What is the difference between living and existing? Living is when you're enjoying life. 
and getting out and doing things that you enjoy doing and not just sitting around like a fixture. <laughs> Lil, what makes you special? The love of my family. I live for my whole family. What do you love most about yourself? Same thing. Because I treasure my my family. I would I don't know what I'd I'd do if you know, some people say would you give your life to save your child? Well, of course. But I I would never want to have to be put in the position to choose who would live and who would die. I couldn't do it. I would rather die myself than have to pick it somebody else. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty proud of myself for raising three kids and helping with my grandkids and loving them and being a partner to my husband. I hope I've been a good partner to him. <laughs> what is the one thing you would most like to change about yourself? My weight. <laughs> I'd like to be as little as I was before I was married. What would you consider to be your deepest fear? My deepest fear is losing anybody that I love. And I've lost so many. I was only... 27 when I lost my dad. He died at 54. And what my mom was in her 70s, close to 80, was she when she died. So I had her loss. But she had the last 15 years, she suffered with Alzheimer's. And the last 10 didn't know us. And didn't speak a word for the last 10 years of her life. But you've heard that saying, why go visit her if she don't remember you? But you know who they are. They may not know you, but you still know who they are. And my mom was a great mother. And so I visited her three times a week. What do most people get wrong about life? That life owes them. And that's, you know, they think everything should be handed to them. And to have, you you shouldn't always think somebody's going to give you this or give you that. You got to learn to earn something. Just like you got to respect somebody else if you expect to be respected. You can't just expect everybody to bend to your wishes and so. What do you think a younger version of yourself would think of you now? Well, I'm hoping they would be proud of the person I've turned out to be. <laughs> Can you pinpoint the moment in your life when you were the happiest? Hmm. There was a lot of moments. Each childbirth, each grandchild that I got, now a great-grandchild. Those were happy moments. And when my boyfriend said we'd get married was a very happy moment. <laughs> it 
What was your wildest dream? <laughs> wildest dream. When I was a little kid, I used to imagine that Elvis Presley was going to come visit me because I had polio, <laughs> but that's when I was little. What goals do you have left to complete? Oh. I really don't have any goals now. I'm too old to have goals. I would like to live, you know, as well as I've been living and hope to live for a few more years to see some more great-grandkids. But the old memory is just, you know, the older you get, the less you can remember and more times you think, what did I do this? Where did I put that? What matters to you the most? Family. When have you felt the lowest in your life? Whenever there's a death in the family. That really knocks the wind out of you for a while. I don't like losing family. Or friends. It's just... What were the three best decisions you ever made? Walking out of the pizza, Mary George's pizza that night, and picking out my husband. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but that's what I was doing. Having kids. When we bought this house, I just was a procrastinator. I would, but he finally said, We're going to find a house. And I just really hated, kind of hated to leave the neighborhood that I grew up in. But I knew we had to get into a house because. I I didn't I hated summers in the trailer because every time there was a tornado warning, I'd wake him up in the middle of the night and say, "Let's go up to my brother's basement up the street." <laughs> he got tired of being woke up. He said, "We're getting a house." <laughs> so we did move. We rented, and till we decided we was at the point where we wanted to take a step further and purchase a house. What's been your biggest mistake so far in life? And what did you learn from it? Well, I know everybody thinks I'm, which I know I'm overprotective. And I want everything to go smooth with my grandkids and, and my kids. And my biggest mistake is want everything to be perfect and everything isn't always going to be perfect and i have you know i worry so much and i want everybody to be happy and it bothers me if they're not and i would like to be able to live without worry but i know i know that's not possible because <laughs> you're always going to worry about something or someone but they all tell me i'm too much of a worry ward and i i know i am but that's me what's your favorite trait about yourself oh, i think now, in this day and age, I think my I'm not as easily fooled as I used to be. I don't uh, believe everything I see or, or read. Because there's a lot of things that happen now that 
if I was younger, I'd probably bite on, but I don't now. So I think I'm a little wiser than I used to be. Sure hope so. Yeah. Would knowing the date of your death affect the way you live life? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I don't know what I'd do different, but I wouldn't want to know. Because as long as I am alive, I don't worry about it. But it just it, recently, in the last few years, I keep thinking I just I'm getting older and older. How much more am I going to be here? <laughs> How long? But I really wouldn't want to know. Would you want to know? <laughs> Are you afraid to die? I don't want to die, but I know I have to eventually. And I, I'm not afraid to die. It's just not knowing what it's like, you know, what it just, that, perplexes me. I just try not to think about it. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you're living now? No, I'd probably just enjoy more, do more things for enjoyment than what we do now. Is there anything you'd feel you'd need to get done? Make sure all my grandkids and kids knew how much I cared for them and how much they mean to me. What do you want people to remember about you when you're gone? Well, I hope they think I'm a nice person, likable, friendly because I try to be likable and friendly and and I enjoy helping people out if they need it. So I hope they think I'm a good person because I feel like I'm a good person. And it makes me happy to see other people happy. What one thing should every human experience at least once in their lifetime? Childbirth. <laughs> Men should have to go through it once in their lifetime. <laughs> but they do have simulators now that the men can feel the, the pain and the contractions. You think it's accurate? I don't know. <laughs> what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my life, my family, my kids, my grandkids. Because I feel like I've had a pretty good life. What advice would you give to a teenager today? Get all the education you can get. Soak it up. Listen, get all the knowledge you can get. What advice would you give to a 30-something today? Enjoy life. Slow down. Don't take on more than what you're capable of doing. Enjoy your family if you have a family. And who are you? Well, Park, I'm a mother of three, a grandmother of seven, great-grandmother of one, and I love life, so. And that's you. That was awesome. <laughs> that was perfect. That was awesome. <laughs>